I wanted to make a brief video about um, some remarks that Luther makes in the large catechism, particularly part three uh, on the Lord's Prayer. In paragraph 28, Luther writes in part, quote, Every one of us should form the daily habit from his youth of praying for all his needs. There, Luther refers to uh, a daily habit being built from one's youth of praying. And as I read that remark, I was thinking to myself, I didn't have this daily habit from my youth. Um, there were limited prayers that I prayed as a child and table prayers and so forth, but not a habit of regimented, regular, predictable prayer. Something as simple as in the small catechism, rising in the morning, making the sign of the cross and so forth like this, and then also doing the same in the evening. And so, you know, as I think about a statement like that from Luther, the question that is raised is, well, how does one, you know, create a habit and a daily one uh, in their uh, older age, let's say, uh, that they were not accustomed to doing in their youth? An analogy here would be something like, it's easier uh, to memorize hymns and sacred scripture when you're young. Something about the mind of a small child is much more malleable and it absorbs. It just has an uncanny ability to learn, which is also to say to you parents out there that you should be teaching your children hymns and the sacred scripture and the small catechism. They should have a lot of that stuff memorized before they even come to catechesis with their pastor. In any event, how does one who has grown into maturity, who has come to the faith later on in life, as I did in my time at university, uh, how do you create a, a habit? And this is something that, frankly, I uh, will struggle with from time to time. Uh, you just feel as though you get some traction under you, and then before long, uh, it uh, is ripped out. And so here are a couple suggestions. Uh, number one, we might think of uh, how to pray. And I recall reading in a volume on Anselm of Canterbury in the introduction, the guy who wrote the introduction said that um, Anselm had four uh, pieces of advice on how to pray. Uh, in the first one, he says that, uh, that the one who is to pray should uh, go quietly into his room. The Latin phrase, uh, in cubiculum meum, in my own cubicle or in my own room, find a place apart from especially social media and all these things, things that serve as distractions, uh, where you can quiet your mind and you can think about the task ahead. Uh, the second uh, piece of advice on how to pray from Anselm is compunctio cordis, that is the compunction of the heart, which would maybe happen uh, by a reflection upon one's sin through a confessional mirror as in the Brotherhood Prayer Book, or uh, simply examining your life, as Luther says, in accord with the Ten Commandments. So, in cubiculum meum, compunctio cordis. Uh, and then the third piece of advice is to excite the mind, excite a mentum, to excite the mind uh, so as to um, spur yourself on to prayer, let's say. And you would excite the mind by uh, maybe rehearsing uh, what prayer is, or why uh, one ought to pray, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, then the fourth one is uh, in chelum, that is, have your thoughts heavenward, as St. Paul says, think on things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. That is to say, as we pray, of course, we're praying for all sorts of concerns that are down here below. Uh, concerns that we have for our life, for our family, uh, if you're a pastor for your congregation, uh, and so forth, and so on like this. Uh, but as you're praying for those concerns here below, you have your mind fixed heavenward. Uh, you realize what the psalmist says, that God sits enthroned over uh, the flood, that he is uh, seated and enthroned and in glory over the tumult of this world. And so there is an ability to pray uh, without grieving and to pray with hope uh, because Christ Jesus uh, lives and reigns to all eternity and has prepared a place for us and has appointed a day uh, in which he's going to return and gather his people uh, together to be with him forever, world without end. Uh, to go back to this excitementum, to excite the mind to prayer, how does one do that? Well, Luther gives these pieces of advice in the large catechism as to why uh, we should pray. 
And he says that in the first place we should pray because God has commanded it. And of course, this would be sufficient. That God has commanded it means we ought to do it. But Luther says, of course, that God is not just simply making a demand upon us. He is uh, also one who is quick to give promises. And so not only is there the command, Luther says, but there is God's promise to hear. Uh, God is graciously awaiting his divine ear desires for the cries of his children to to enter there, and he is pleased to hear their cries for mercy. He's not like an earthly father who constantly gets irritated at the pestering of his children, but as the Catechism says, with boldness and confidence. Right? We call upon him as dear children, uh, call upon their father uh, who is in heaven. So he has commanded it. He promises to hear. In the case of the large uh, catechism's uh, commentary on the Lord's Prayer, Luther says that God has arranged the words for us to pray. The Lord's Prayer is such a wonderful prayer because, of course, it's the prayer of our Lord Jesus. And he's arranged the words for us to pray so that we know they are pleasing to him. And he rejoices to hear them. So that would be the third, that God arranges our petitions for us to pray. Fourthly, prayer shows us our need. That is to say, prayer and the uh, committing ourselves to prayer is kind of a self-charging system. We pray and we recognize our need. And when we recognize our need, we pray. And when we pray, we recognize our need. And when we recognize our need, we pray. So prayer has a way of showing us our need. And finally, prayer drives away the devil. As Luther says, no one can call upon the name of God from the heart and the devil will long remain. So I hope this is helpful in creating a habit to pray because we ought to pray. There's very many things to pray for. God bless you.